For the first example, or first exercise, I want us to try to write this uh, language, a language that recognizes palindromes, where uh, the empty string is a palindrome, a single character is a palindrome, because it starts and it ends with the same character, and then you might have um, even numbers where a, a starts with a, ends with a. Um, any string that you can reverse, you get the same string back. That is a palindrome. So BBB starts, if you reverse that, you get BBB back. Same with ABA and so on. So the PDA that we want to write, and I hope you, you try to do this, um, should reject, for instance, ABB, because when you reverse it, you get, when you reverse that string, you get BBA, which is different than the, the original string, ABB. But with ABA, it's not the case. So as usual, when you give a PDA, the only way to know if it's correct is really to, uh, that, we, that we're gonna learn is really to give it, exam uh, give it inputs. So you should always test with inputs that accept and uh, inputs that reject. I would recommend you to try with strings of up to three letters, let's say. That should give you a good feel, three to four letters. Always try with the empty string. Okay, so um, I'm gonna ask you to pause now the video and try to do it yourself, and then I'm gonna advance. Okay, so I hope you, you did the exercise. Now let's see what I got. So the PDA that I got was this one, where um, I either, whenever I, I pop, I push, I read an input, I push that input. And whenever I, it could be either A or B. And the idea is um, you are pushing all the inputs that you want. And let's disregard this for a moment. Um, the basic, basic idea is that you might want to Let's consider first the easy case, which is I'm going to push a certain number of times, and then let's say if I push three times, I want to pop three times, right? So I do A, 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 I'm going to put three A's. Because of how the stack works, if you just put A's, and then here you will pop A's, that is an easy case. So at least that works. So now let's see what happens when you interleave. When you interleave, you will get a and B, let's say, but now because of the way the stack works, uh, if you read A and B, you will get in your stack on the top B and then A. So if you pop by the same order in which you've consumed, you will get, um, you will just reverse. So if you read A, B, then you read on Q2, you have to read B, A. Um, once the string is, when the, once the stock, stack is empty, you're ready to accept the string. Uh, but this only covers even numbers of, of letters, right? If you have two letters, you would have to read two letters by the reverse order. Um, and the reason we add these two transition is if we want to um, accept an even number of letters, right? If you do A and then B, uh, now you just need to read what? You need to read B, you need to read A again, right? So if you did A, B, A. So the idea is that when you read something in the middle, um, that doesn't go into the stack, right? Because what you want is everything up to the stack. So let's see, let's revise these examples. If you read an A, you wanna push an A, and then you will pop an A. If you read an A, you push it, and then you have B, which is in the middle. You don't put out that in the stack, so you still have A, you will read A here. Uh, similarly, you will do the same for here. You will push one B, you will not push anything, it will just consume this B, and finally you will read the second B by popping it. Uh, so it would work on all of these. Uh, this is the trivial case where you don't push anything to the stack, you just consume the A, and the stack is empty, so you're ready to accept. So ideally, this stack should work. This, uh, sorry, PDA should work. Uh, and indeed, let's look at a few um, derivation graphs that we've been using. Um, and I ask you to look at this uh, slide, maybe draw it in your notebook, notebook um, draw it, and then try to uh, draw the, the derivation graph from it, just so you, you can uh, 
convince yourself that it does indeed accept ABA. So I'm going to let you do that for a bit. Please pause the video and get back here when you're done. Uh, please try to do this because it will be a good exercise for you to understand the non-determinism that um, exhibits here, that happens here. Okay, so I'm going to let you pause. Okay, I hope it was an interesting experiment. And this is what you get. If you try to do ABA, you will get all of these paths. Okay, uh, whereas the only path that really matters is this one, where you go on Q1 and you read 1A and then you read B without pushing anything on the stack. Notice that the stack remains the same and you go to Q2 and from Q2 now you're on Q2 where you can read A's again because that's what you have on the, on the top. So you re read another B, A and now your stack is empty, you can advance to the final state. Everything else, you could either, uh, you know, just this case is where you exhaust, you push everything that you read into the, the stack, right? So you, you keep yourself here, you read A, B, A, but then you advance with epsilon to Q2, but in Q2, um, at this point, what do you do? If you read everything, then you get stuck because you get stuck after you read the B. Let's see if that's what happens. You read A, you read B, you read A, and then you advance to Q2, and in Q2, sorry, and in Q2 you are, um, you should be able to read A, but it, your input has been exhausted, so you, you won't be able to advance there. Okay, so yeah, I hope you, you try all of these possibilities to convince yourself that you're um, you understand how, what are the reachable and active um, states on, on the PDA that I just gave you. So now let's try to see the example where uh, the PDA that it just gave you rejects the string ABB. So try to do that by yourself again. And as you know, rejection is, is more interesting, is, is really where the derivation graph it gives you all the possibilities, so it's the only way you can convince yourself that the PDA actually rejects your string. So try to do that, and please pause the video. I'll wait a bit. Okay, I hope you did, did try the derivation graph. Uh, so this is what I got. Um, the idea is that you were going to explore all the, the various states, uh, trying to consume B, and in all uh, ABB, and in all the cases where you are able to push ABB, you get stuck. So here you are in, in stack two, where you in Q2, where you consumed ABB. So it's similar to that path that we saw in the previous example. Uh, similar cases where we read A, and then if we try to read B, then we don't have, um, you know, we have B. If we pop B, if we skip the, the stack and go to Q2, then we don't have anything else to no more input and we still have stuff in the stack otherwise we can try to pop 1b but then we don't have an input and we still have something in the stack so there's a, all sorts of situations where it it goes wrong um, okay so this graph shows you that the automaton rejects abb so in the next video we're going to talk about exercise two